World Cup has come back around to Group G and it's a crunch match between Belgium and England. First against second, who's going to come out on top? We'll talk about that match and much more on today's show. That's right folks, back once again with another match preview, this time looking ahead to the Group G encounter between the 1966 winners England up against one of the favourites, Belgium. Now we'll talk about that match in just one second but if you're new to the channel stop what you're doing swallow what you're chewing and subscribe to the channel baby smash the old uh, subscribe button it'll keep you bang up to date with all things world cup related blackburn rovers related football related uh we'll try and keep you up to speed with anything and everything that goes on uh about that anyway uh hopefully we get some fan input about this match a little bit later on um, but until then, let's just take a look at the nitty gritty. Now, England will be up against Belgium at the Kaliningrad Stadium out in Kaliningrad on the 28th of June. And uh, England, still managed by Gareth Southgate, got themselves to Russia by winning Group F of the uh, European qualifying campaign. Uh, and they did that on the 5th of October 2017. This is, in fact, their 15th World Cup, their last being 2014 out in Brazil. And I mentioned it already, they won the stinking thing back in 1966. Now, if you're a betting man, you can currently get odds on England winning the whole stinking lot at a reasonable uh, 9 to 1. I think they're currently, what, sixth favourites uh, as for their opposition. Belgium, currently managed by Roberto Martinez, got themselves to Russia by winning Group H of the European qualifying campaign, and they did that on the 3rd of September 2017. This is, in fact, their 13th World Cup. Uh, their last was also out in Brazil. Their best ever performance was fourth in 1986, but you can currently get odds on Belgium winning this stinking thing at 8 to 1. Woo, so it's not too far off of England's. Uh, uh, tally. As for the two sides, they've met, what is it, 21 times in all competitions. England win 15 of them. They've drawn four and uh, Belgium have won two. The last appearance between these two sides was a win for Belgium. 1-0 winners in a friendly and that was in the 2nd of June 2012. So let's take a current state, uh, look at the state of play in Group G. Uh, England and Belgium are currently first and second respectively. Uh, six points apiece. Goal difference of uh, plus six also. Tunisia and uh, Panama are duking out at the bottom of the table uh, for the wooden spoon. As for how they got there, Belgium got here by beating Panama 3-0. Uh, that was back in the Fischl Olympic Stadium in Sochi. And they wrapped it up with a 5-2 win over Tunisia at the Okara Arena out in Moscow. As for England, they beat Tunisia at the Volongrad Arena out in Volongrad. 2-1 winners, Kane on the double. As for the last match, they took on Panama and they won 6-1. Nizhny Novograd Stadium out in Nizhny Novograd. 6-1 winners. Kane with three, Stone's got a, a brace, and Lingard with a perla. 6-1 at the end of play. Now, my initial thoughts on this one, we all thought that this was going to be the case, and it's proven to be just that, that the two favoured sides are going to duke it out for the top spot, second spot, and with the prospect of taking on the first and second place team in Group H, whoever they might meet, that may be. There is no real indication as to who is going to be taking on who thus far. Um, right now, if it ended up a board draw, according to this table that I'm looking at, England would be top, Belgium would be second. And right now it's a three-way battle in Group H between Senegal, Japan and a revitalised Colombia. So it could be any one of those for anyone of your size, both England and Belgium. So you've got to keep an eye on that as that pans out. But England have been playing good, but I think Belgium have been playing better. And it's just, I think it's going to be a, a matter of, of the mentality of the managers. Are they going to rotate their squads? Are they going to give guys an extra uh, an extra day off? Are they going to rest, for example, their goalkeepers, their, their, their starters? Are they going to get, uh, give their main scoring uh, personnel a break? Lukaku and Kane, are they going to be playing or are they going to be rested? Hazard, is he going to be playing? What about uh, what about Lingard and, and Sterling? You know, there's, there's some, some possible questions. Or are, they, are they just going to continue on? Hey, you're at the World Cup. You've got seven games to play. You're going to play all seven of them. I'm only going to change it up if need be. But to be honest with you, I think there will be changes. I think this is a gimme. You know, uh, I, I don't, again, I've said this before. I don't know, beyond the second round matches, I don't know where they'll fall next. I don't know who they'll be lined up after a, the Group H match deep within the tournament. So um, I think they'll want to they wanna rest some key players and save them for the crunch. So I expect Kane, possibly Pickford, possibly Sterling, possibly... Um, uh, you know, Stones or, you know, just, just some of the key players so far, they'll have a day off, bring in Vardy, bring in uh, Butland, just mix it up a bit, give them, give them all a, uh, an extra day's rest to kind of springboard for uh, the game against 
uh, whoever it may be in the knockout phases. Anyway, that's just a little bit what I have to say about this match. What you really want to hear is some fan input. So you've heard a little bit what I have to say about this match. What you really want to hear is what the fans are talking about. And once again, I'm joined by the lovely Miss England. She's here with me once more. And uh, before we get into the, the thick of the things, uh, if anybody's watching that's going to go to England, uh, what would you recommend for them for a traditional English meal? <laughs> I have to go with fish and chips. Um, absolutely the, the greatest, one of the greatest English meals you can have. Um, yeah, I mean, and there's so many fish and chip shop places around. Um, you know, you need to make sure you have lots of salt and vinegar. It's nice when the chips stick to the paper and you have to pull them off. Uh, you can have curry sauce, some mayonnaise. Uh, that's definitely a delicious meal and I would recommend that for anyone. Okay, folks, if you're watching, you're going to England, that's on your bucket list. Okay, so England coming into this game fresh off the back of a monstrous victory against Panama 6-1 and they're into the last 16. So how are you feeling right now as you get closer to the Belgian game? How, how's your mood? How, how's the optimism? You know, um, it's funny. I, I think it's easy to take for granted uh, the fact that, um, you know, we are... Uh, through and uh, we actually don't need to worry too much about this game in years gone by it has been very scary and even and watching the games today watching what happened with Iran being so close to qualifying I feel very good that um, this game I am not going to have a heart attack against Belgium <laughs> spot on spot on okay uh, as we get closer to the game to, against Belgium um would you make any changes? Would you field maybe a second string side or would you keep the guys that are already in there? You know, this has really been a great debate at the moment. And I think because it's the uh, Belgian team and we know that, gosh, out of their 23 squad, half of them play in the English Premier League and a few of them have played in the English Premier League. So that makes it a little bit more interesting, not just from a World Cup point of view, but from a point of view that there's bragging rights. You know, um, uh, these um, Dembele and um, uh, Vertonghen, uh, you know, um, Fellaini, all these guys, Courtois, they want to be able to go back home in August, start the Premier League and say, we beat you. So um, I think that makes the game a little bit more interesting. I think both managers would agree that they do need to rest their key players. Um, we know that um, I think uh, like Ali had the knock in the first game. I think Hazard and Lukaku had a knock. So theoretically, one would say, yes, let's start a second string of players. You know, let's bring in the Vardy and the Rose and Rashford. And, um, you know, let's see if Dell is, um, you know, back to uh, full recovery after the first game. But however, I think, you know, Kane, he's on five goals. Uh, Ronaldo today couldn't um, get an additional goal. So I, I think... I think as much as we want to say, yes, let's rest the players, I think there's that temptation to actually say, no, you know, let's play them. Let's let's have a real, real uh, clash of the titans. Okay. Um, now, switching to a broader view of the World Cup, outside of, outside of Group G, who's impressed you the most? I would say France. Um, they, they've been there quietly doing their thing. We know they have some uh, the great stars. Pogba finally showed up in his last game. Um, you know, they've got Mbappe. Um, so I think France, um, Mexico, I think, have just really um, calm and um, you know, that their first win against Germany, that was a really great game. Uh, Switzerland have surprised me a little bit, um, but yeah, I, I think definitely France, uh, Brazil, I think they're, they're still coming out. I think they definitely have the skill and the players, but we haven't seen yet what everyone was hoping they would see from Brazil. Spot on, spot on. Uh, okay, uh, England through to the last 16. Uh, it's still bubbling in Group H, which is where England are going to be landing in the, the round 16. Who would you want to face out of the, the countries battling it out? That, that's, um, 
you know, watching the games on Sunday, um, you know, Colombia had, you know, such a beautiful 3-0 win. Um, the Senegal and Japan mm -hmm. game, you know, was such a tight game, uh, back and forth. And um, it was a tie in the end. Honestly, um, you know, I feel like Colombia and Senegal may go through. But honestly, I think, you know, if Japan were to go through and we would face them, I, I would be happy with that. Indeed. I think that's, that's, that would be uh, everybody from England's uh, uh, ideal scenario. OK, let's cut straight to the chase. Uh, score prediction, Belgium against England. What's it going to be? This is a really tough one because, again, you know, we don't know who's going to start. You know, are their stars going to start? Are our stars going to start? But honestly, all our, all our team are stars. You know, uh, Vardy. I mean, uh, Lukaku got 16 goals this season. Kane got 30, you know, in the English Premier League. And I think Vardy and Sterling got more goals than Lukaku. So, yes, Lukaku is having a great campaign so far. But, you know, even if we do take off Kane, we still have stars. They still have stars. I think... Um, I'm going to go for a good 2-2 uh, draw. I think I think they're going to fight it out. I think there are going to be a few goals, and I think I'm going to go for the tie. All right. Okay. Well, that sounds, sounds like an entertaining one, 2, two. But it'll be a chance for England to play with no, a little bit of less pressure than expected. Anyway, uh, another game going on in your group. Kind of meaningless at the minute, but uh, 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 Panama against Tunisia. What's the score going to be in that game? I think Tunisia are finally going to get a win. Right. Yeah, they, they, they looked hungry against us. Um, you know, I, I hope pa Panama get another goal. It was so great to see them celebrate against us. And, you know, it would be amazing if they actually got a win, um, you know, their first win in a World Cup. So, um, but I think Tunisia might just edge them. Yep, yep. I think they're the stronger out of the two. Okay, any last minute words of wisdom for this game up against uh, Belgium? What's uh, Try to get them over the line, get the top spot. What are you going to say? Okay, guys, you've done an excellent job so far. Some people have doubted you and said that, well, you haven't played that great a competition, but you guys have done amazing. Um, eight goals in two games. Um, you can do it. We're so excited. We're so proud of you, and we're looking forward to you going above and beyond, and uh, we're so proud of you. You can do it, England. There you go, boys and girls. Hopefully, England get over the line. They get top spots. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a cracking game. Whatever happens, anyway. Uh, hopefully, we can get some more reaction from you, just like last time. Absolutely, yes. Perfect. And also, we'll get to chat with you again. It's in the bank. We'll get to see you next time for the build up to the last sixteen. Whoever England take on, so we'll look forward to that as well. Absolutely. Perfect. That'll be exciting. All right, it will be. It will be. It's it's, it's getting to the nitty gritty stages now. Anyway, we'll let you get out of here, and uh, we'll speak to you very soon. Tell you a little bit what I've got to say about this match. Now, what you really want to hear is what the fans are saying. And I'm joined once again by Mr. Belgium, who is very happy as, as they're already through to the knockout phases. But, OK, before we get to the World Cup mode, if I was to go to Belgium and you were to recommend a traditional food or traditional meal, what would you recommend? Well, we're Belgium. We have fries. We're like the master of fries. And I don't know, even know why they call it French fries. <laughs> so just come on down to Brussels Grab yourself a, a, a nice big steak with some French fries. French fries. <laughs> okay. Just enjoy it. That, there we go. So, yeah. Try the try the French fries in Belgium. They're supposed <laughs> to be top notch. Okay, now let's get back into the zone of the World Cup. Now, Belgium come into this game up against England. Fresh off the back of a 5-2 spanking of, uh, of Tunisia. And they've booked themselves a spot in the last 16. So, how are you feeling currently right now as your team's progressed? And also off the back of that last win. I can't feel like I actually can't feel any better because we won 5-2. It's something that I've actually didn't saw coming because I've, at first I saw England struggle against Tunisia, and we're top of the groups. We're already advanced through to the next round, so there's no pressure. We can play a B team now. You can play a B team. I probably expect you guys to play a B team. And speaking of that game up against England, it, you know it's a chance for both. England fans and Belgian fans to see uh, their teams up against a little bit more beefier competition with no pressure. But uh, any changes? Uh, what changes would you like to see in the in the lineup for this game? Well, they actually said never change the winning recipe, so I, I, I should just stay to the to the same eleven that won against Tunisia. So you would not risk? Uh, you would not save anybody just in case for injuries or or, or concern. Well, Maybe you can get uh, Batshuayi in for Lukaku because Lukaku is also uh, is all is doing on a uh, pretty good streak. Yeah. Um, so we can really give 
but show some confidence there. And maybe Torgan Hazard and some other rotation players can actually step up to get some confidence yep. and some rhythm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, outside of your group, who have you been impressed by so far out of the other countries taking part? I really loved Croatia playing. Um, I mean, their their mid their midfield is passing it all, and their their defense is somehow holding it strong because Lovren wasn't that kind of good at Liverpool until Van Dijk came in, and uh, Vida, the, the guy from Besiktas, or uh, yeah, Besiktas, is quite decent as well. They they really blew my mind. Okay. Um, as as obviously now you guys are about to through to the knockout phases alongside England. Um, the, how the bracket pans out, you will be taking on somebody from Group H. Uh, who would you rather face? There's still uh, the, the the two places in Group H have yet to be confirmed, but it's Japan, Senegal, or uh, Colombia. Who would you rather face in the knockout phases? Um, just for the matchup wise, I would like to pick Japan because they're the team that I knew uh, the least about. But if I really want a great match, I would uh, suggest I'm picking Colombia. So, Okay, well, we'll see how that pans out. Obviously, still got a, a couple games in the way of that. Anyway, let's cut straight to the chase. Score prediction between Belgium and England. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> I think this, prim- this Premier League All-Star game will be decided on a draw. And it will probably go to the FIFA Fair Play point rule. Fair Play. Is that, so is that, how, is that how it's decided, the top two? Uh, Yeah, it's decided on um, card points because we have the same goal difference right now. We have the same goal scored, goals conceded. So it all comes down to um, the records between England and Belgium. But if it's a draw, it will go down to fair play points. Okay, that's uh, some clarification right there because I was always confused at how that was going to pan out. Anyway, uh, also there's a bit of an irrelevant game right now in your group as well. Panama against Tunisia. How's how's that going to play out? I really hope for uh, Panama they, that they can actually manage to get their first victory at the World Cup ever because uh, against um, the last game against England, they have actually managed to, go, uh, to score their first goal ever at the World Championship. So I'm hoping for a sneaky 1-0 for Panama. Sneaky, so we're rooting for Panama in this one. Okay. Uh, I guess there's no real reason for motivation. You know, I guess you kind of still want to finish top of the pops. But any uh, motivational words for Team Belgium as they go into this game against England? No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, just no pressure. Think that uh, the England players are just like Tunisia and go smash them five two. <laughs> I would love to see that. So just go hey, get them. It's not off. It's not. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say that's. That's not doable. I still, I would fancy Belgium, and I was speaking to the Australia guy not so long ago. He likes Belgium, so uh, yes, yeah, I think they are one of the teams to watch, uh, and we will see them in the knockout phases a little bit later on. Hopefully, we'll get some reaction from you from that England match, uh, like you've been doing yep. thus far, and we will speak to you once again in the preparation for the knockout stages once they get all sorted out. Yep. Till then, we'll say goodbye. Bye bye. Leave over what the fans have to say, but now what you really want to hear in this crunch game is what the cat has to think. Let's take a look at what she's predicted between England and Belgium. Close my eyes. enjoyed this video give it a good old thumbs up and if you're new to the channel smash the old subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things world cup related i'm also on twitter and facebook links to them bad boys are in the old description below yeah uh also let me hear your thoughts and opinions about this match Who, who's going to win who's going to come out on top how far can both these nations go in the world cup will we is the one of the eventual winners in group g probably not but uh i want to know your thoughts about it anyway Close one, this one. If I had to put it, if I had to call it, I'm probably going to go with Belgium just because of the fact that they have, uh, not only do they have an amazing amount of depth, but the quality that they have. 
um, waiting in the wings is phenomenal. As for England, they do have some good players that can't get in the squad, but they're not phenomenal players. So uh, I think I think Belgium have have it. It's theirs to lose. Are they the perfect team? I don't think so. I just think they've got some. They've had some good performances so far. Uh, I think a strong Colombia or a, or even a, a decent Senegal, maybe even a tricky Japan, could be uh, a better opposition for both England and Belgium as they get closer towards the knockout phases. So they've got to beware about that. Anyway, I'm going to duck out right now, but let me hear your thoughts and opinions in the section below. Until then, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Now, if you are interested in that Cast the Cat app, you want to hit that button right there. It'll send you over to my WordPress site where you can find a downloadable link. Also, if you've yet to subscribe to the channel, hit that magical button right there. This is your one-stop shop for the 2018 World Cup. I've also got old previews and reviews that you can check out down there. And also let me hear your thoughts and opinions. Whack them in the comments section below. And I will see you all very, very soon.